pray that it will be a blessing to you um, as much and more of a blessing that it was to me. Uh, so we're getting ready to dig in in just a second. As soon as I can see the screen again, I all right, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So again, I'm, I'm excited tonight to be back to share. I um, want to go ahead and release this, this word on tonight. Um, I, I, the other day, I was just sitting and listening and listening to, uh, you know, different things, listening to the Lord and, and God was speaking. And, um, and so we're going we're gonna to give you what, what he shared with us on tonight. And um, I pray that you're blessed by it. Um, and like I said, good to see everybody again. Um, uh, we continue to pray one for another. And uh, we pray that you have been blessed and we pray that you're going to be even more blessed um, as you continue on this journey. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Uh, so let's let's get ready to go into the word of God. Um, you already prayed, Dick. Okay, that's our tired am. Um, let, let's let's get go to, to the book of uh let's go to the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew chapter um, 16, and let's start at uh, verse, let's start at verse 13, all right, a very, a very, very familiar text to some, um, and we want to just share a little bit of, out of what um, the Lord has is, um, is shared with us. Uh, tonight, we, we want to talk about, we want to talk about the master key, all right, the master key tonight. Praise the Lord. Like I said, I was listening the other day and just something just struck my spirit as I was listening. Um, and, the, and the Lord just began to speak to me out of um, what a brother in Christ was saying uh, the other day um, as he was ministering. The Lord began to minister to me and uh, began to share something with me. So, all right. So let's let's go. Let's go. Let's get ready to ride. Everybody got the seatbelt on. Everybody got the door closed. Uh, you tucked in. You got your popcorn ready. All right, let's take this ride. We're getting ready to take a journey through the word of God on tonight. All right, Matthew 16. I'm there. 16 and what? Matthew 16 and 13. And I'm going to have my reader to read. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Matthew 16 and 13. Matthew 16 and 13. Read. Don't do me like Gino Jennings do. No. <laughs> okay, so. What did the book say? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, he said he was at work. Okay. Matthew 16, verse 13 says, when Jesus, okay, I'm in a message translation. Let me move because it switches. 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Syria, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? Mm -hmm. And they said, some say John the Baptist. Uh huh. Others say Elijah and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Uh huh. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, mm -hmm. the son of the living God. Yes. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, son. Blessed are you, Simon mm -hmm. Barjona, mm -hmm. for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, you are Peter. Mm -hmm. And on this rock, I will build my church mm -hmm. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right. I will give you the keys. Praise the Lord. You don't go want ahead, to keep going? Oh, okay. I'm Verse agreeing. 19. Okay. He's agreeing. Verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And whatever you bind on earth mm -hmm. shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Say that one more time. Verse 19, I will give you, mm -hmm. you, he gave you the mm -hmm. keys of the kingdom yes. of heaven mm -hmm. and whatsoever, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. <laughs> All right. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. He gave you the keys. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, so tonight we want, we want to, we want to deal with talk from the subject of the master key. All right. The master key. All right. Jesus was on his journey. Um, you know, Jesus, he came to earth and he, he had a, a purpose and a mission. And that mission was that he would come and, and suffer a gruesome death and to die uh, up on Golgotha's hill on the cross to be crucified 
Um, he was beaten, spit upon, and all that good stuff. Well, not good stuff, but all of those things. Um, he plucked his beard out, put a crown of thorn on his head. They gave him vinegar to drink. Uh, then they pierced him in the side, and um, he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder and gave up the ghost, all right? So that was his purpose. That was his mission to come and to die on the cross. And, and in him dying on the cross, it was for the purpose of putting away the works of the devil, all right? Anybody yes. excited about Jesus putting away the works of the devil, all right? So that should be encouraging to us right there that Jesus put away the works of the devil, yes. all right? So all the devil really doing is fronting. He's fronting and faking and, and, and faking the funk, all right? Because he really can't do anything because Jesus already put away his works, all right? So now, um, he was on his journey and he was getting close to that point and, and it already had began to cause some kind of concern in Jesus, you know, because even though he was God in the flesh, uh, he was still a human being at the same time. He was he was 100 percent God and 100 percent man at the same time. All right. And so the fleshly side of him was starting to become concerned because it was getting close to that time. All right that he was to die, all right? So um, in him having this concern on his heart, so he began to say, okay, well, you know, uh, boys, we, we, we've been walking together for a little while now. And, and, and you know, I've been sharing a lot of things with you. I, I allow you to experience a lot of things with you, you know, and uh, Peter, James, and John, especially you guys, you know, because I brought you in a situation that I didn't allow some of the other ones to come into, all right? But you guys were right there. So, you know, you guys been walking with me for a little while. I've been teaching you a lot of things, and, you know, and I'm sure you grab hold to a lot of things. He said, but now it's time to time to do an evaluation, you know, to see was my teaching in vain, to see was my walk with you in vain, to see uh, throughout all of these days and nights that we spent together and traveling and, and doing uh, the business of the kingdom. Let's see, you know, uh, let's evaluate where we are. All right. And so now uh, Peter, Jesus had this concern. So he, he began to talk to the disciples. All right. And he told, he asked them a question. He said, uh, who, who, who do men say that I am? Yeah. All right. Who do who do who do people? All right. That you see on a daily basis. Who who, who do they say I am? All right. I, I'm just doing an evaluation. I want to see where everybody is. I want to see who really knows who I am. All right. And so uh, he, he asked the question. He said, "Who do men say that I am?" And then the disciples begin to you know give the rundown. They say, "Well, you know, some of them say that you're John the Baptist. Some say that you're Elijah, all right? and some Isaiah or one of the prophets." All right. Jesus said, okay, well, all right, well, well, I, I, I can, I can, I can see that, all right, that, that's, that's good, all right, but now, let me, let me, uh, let me bring it home, all right, who, who do you say that I am, hmm. all right, <laughs> now, these people, they heard of me, and, and they, they saw me passing through certain cities and, and, and towns and places where I taught certain synagogues that I chose to stop by, all right, but but you, my inner circle, the ones that are walking with me, the one that I sleep with next to every night, the one that I uh, uh, get up in the morning with, the one that I go and pray with, the one that I pray for, all right, who do you say that I am? Yeah. All right, and the Bible says that uh, they said that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Peter stood up and said, uh, you, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Yeah. All right, and then Jesus said, you know what? Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you. Yeah. But my father, which is in heaven. All right. And and he said, and, and, and check this out, Peter. He said, and upon this rock, I'm, I'm going to build church. my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against. It. Yes. All right. And then check this out as well. And then he went a little further. He said, you know what else, Peter? He said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. All right. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Yes. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven as well. Mm. All right. And so he, and he told him this. All right. <clears throat> so now let's let's take a look at it. Let's walk. Let's walk through the text. Let's tip through to the text. God bless you, April. God bless you. Facebook Live. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. All right. Tonight, August. God bless you. We're talking about the master key tonight. All right. The master key. All right, so my entire assignment tonight is just to let you know that God has given you the master key. All right, God has given you the master key. All right, and what I mean by that, you know, um, some years back, I was a supervisor of a hotel, all right, 
And as being a supervisor of that hotel, or even as an employee of that hotel, uh, when you were employed there, they issue you a master key. All right. Now, what that master key does, that master key gives you access to every room in the building. All right. It gives you access to every room in the building. All right. So, again, my assignment tonight is to let you know that God has given you the master key. He has given us the master key. All right. Now, we see here that Jesus, let me back up a little bit. Jesus was talking. He asked a question. He said, who do men say that I am? Mm -hmm. All right. Some of them said John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets, so forth. Then he said, but you guys, all right, you leaders, you guys that are right well with me, who do you say that I am? All right. And the Bible says they all got silent. But Peter stood up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. All right. And so now uh, Jesus began to share with Peter, like, Peter, look, look, boy, you didn't just go and get this out of that little knucklehead you got on your shoulders. The, the Lord himself, my father, have revealed this unto you. Yeah. All right. Because even though I have been walking with you, I never flat out told you who I was. All yeah, right. So yeah. it had to be God to reveal this unto you. Then he told him, he said, look, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you there, Peter. Uh -huh. He said, and upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. All right. What do you yes. mean by the rock? What, what is the rock? I would submit to say that Peter was the first rock. All right. That was laid. All right. To build the modern church, mm. to build the end time church, to build the ecclesia. All right. You say, well, you know, Jesus is the rock. Yes, Jesus is the rock. But Jesus, uh, when it comes to the church, Jesus is the chief cornerstone. All right. By which every other block is laid. All right. And so he said, Peter, upon this rock, Peter's name, amen, meant pebble. All right. And so uh, he, and which is Petros. All right. And so Jesus blessed them and he added to it. He said, upon this rock, Peter, you a rock. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Yeah. All right. So, so what is, what is the significance of that? Upon the revelation that you have received on the day, I'm going to build my church on, on, on top of this. All right. And so, and that's what, that's what's happening here. So now when we look at the church, when we look at the ecclesia, the ecclesia means the called out one. All right. So when we look at that and we examine that, what's really happening here is that Jesus has given us a, a insight on the mystery of the church. All right. He is saying, uh, he is saying, uh, praise, praise the Lord. Sorry. The rock. Yes. And so he said that, uh, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And so and, and upon this revelation, I'm going to build my church, all right? And so now uh, you have received this revelation of what? Of the kingdom. So he was giving, he was giving us the uh, revelation of the mystery of the church, which is the church is the kingdom of God. Yeah. All right? It's what he was building, kingdom. he was building the kingdom of God, all right? So uh, the rock, Peter was the first rock that was laid, all right? Just like you and I, we are rock. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. And so because we are rocks, what, what did the Bible say? The Bible says that we all right, make up the church. Mm -hmm. All right. So we we ourselves make up the church of the kingdom of God. So we are the blocks, the rocks that were laid that build up the church, that make up the church. All right. So even though uh, uh, there was a physical building, all right, there, the tabernacle, but Jesus was speaking of another building. All right. Mm -hmm. That's not made by hands. That's not made by man's hand. Uh, this building, our I man is, 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 is designed and built by God. Yes. All right. And, and that is the ecclesia, the ecclesia, uh, uh, the, the church, the body of Christ. All right. And so now he says, all right, I'm, 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 I'm giving you the mystery here. And that's what it is, is that uh, to, to, uh, to, to be able to understand what the church is, to be able to understand the kingdom of God, then you have to receive this revelation. What is the revelation of knowing who Jesus is? Mm. All right. Now, Jesus walked with many days with many people, done many miracles, signs, and wonders, but still there were many whose eyes were blind to just who Jesus was, all right, to who he is, Yeah. all yeah. right? Just like today, you can have people that go to church. You can go to church Sunday after Sunday. You can go to church uh, uh, until the seat of your pants wear out, all right? But if you don't have a, a, a revelation from God of, of, of who he is, then you don't know the kingdom of God. All right. Then you never experienced the kingdom of God. See, a lot of people have experienced church, 
but they have never experienced the kingdom of God. Mm. All right. And so, and that's what's happening in this last yeah. day. That's what's happening in, in groups like this. All right. That we are not teaching just the, uh, church per se or the gospel per se but we're we're, we're, we're teaching the the yeah. kingdom of god all right mm -hmm. and so i'm gonna get to that in just a minute i'm gonna get to that in just a minute so in other words um I, i'm submitting you tonight uh that god has given you a master key a master key gives you total access all right a master key gives you total access all right and what is it giving us access to the master key that god gives is the keys to the kingdom of God. He told Peter, he said, look, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yes, All right. Yes. And he said, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound yes, in heaven. Yes. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed, loosed in, in heaven. heaven. All right. Yes. Now, another thing with keys, when, when, when it comes to keys, keys also represent authority. All right. So he says, Peter, because of this revelation that you receive, and now you know and understand what the kingdom of God is, all right, and that the kingdom of God is with me. And so now I'm going to give you the authority that whatsoever you establish in the earth, heaven is going to back it up. Yes. All right. Yes. yes. Whatsoever you bind on earth, I'm going to bind it in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth, I'm going to loose it in heaven. Jesus. All right. So, so he's giving us the master key. He's giving us the keys to the kingdom of heaven, all right? So now we understand that we have the master key. We have the key to the kingdom of heaven, all right? So now he told Peter, so I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you these keys, all right? Now, when I was a supervisor at this hotel, when they gave me this key, they gave me a form that I had to fill out where I had to read and understand and I had to sign, all right? to uh, give my signature on the dotted line to show that along with these keys that I'm going to not just be reckless, but I'm going to be responsible with these oh, keys. Oh, that's the same Bible study I would be in. All right. No. All right. So he said, he says, all right, that I'm going to give you uh, uh, these keys, but along with these keys, all right, it's going to have to come some responsibility. Yes. All right. So you're going to have to have some discipline along with these keys. All right. Why? Because like, again, I, I was a supervisor of a hotel that had 300 rooms in it, all right? And so I couldn't just be reckless with the key and just go opening up doors just because I wanted to open them up. Right. All right, why? Because I would have been invading someone else's privacy. I would have been uh, stepping in into someone else's territory, all right? So I couldn't be reckless with the key, but I had to have some discipline with the key. And so I had to have some wisdom and understanding to know uh, which rooms were occupied and which rooms were not occupied so that I just wouldn't be going into the wrong door at the wrong time. All right. See, what it is is that there's some there's some times and some seasons in your life where God would allow you to walk through certain doors than he will sometimes in other cases. All right. There are some doors that you're going to walk in in this season that you couldn't walk in in the last season. Yes. Yes. All right. There are some doors that you're going to have to use your master key to unlock and open up that you couldn't open up before. Mm -hmm. All right. Because it wasn't the time and the season yet. All right. And so God, he has given you the master key. And so you have to have some discipline with that master key and you have to have some wisdom to understand um, how to use that master key. All right. So like I said, you just can't be reckless along with it. So he has given you the key, all right? And because he has given us the keys tonight, uh, there's one more thing I want to submit to you guys tonight. I want to submit to you to stop praying for doors. My God. All right, we've been praying for doors too long. Stop praying for doors <laughs> and pray for keys. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right, yes. Jesus didn't give him the door. Jesus gave him the key to unlock the door. All right. So you don't have to worry about the door if you got the key to unlock the door. <laughs> All right. So 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 God has given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. All right. So we have the power and the ability to unlock doors. All right. And we have the also the ability and the power to lock doors. All right. So keys do two things. Keys unlock and keys lock up. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on heaven, I'll bind on earth. I mean, bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. And whatsoever you loose in heaven, I'll loose on earth. So in other words, if you unlock the door, Peter, all right, because I have given you the keys and I trust you with my authority, then I'm going to go ahead and give you the authority to open it up and walk on in there. 
Mm-hmm. All right. All right. And if you decide that this is a door that you want to close in your life, then I'm going to give you the ability to use the key to lock that door and no devil in hell will be able to open it. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I got to start right there. So in uh-huh. other words, what you're saying tonight is instead of us having to ask God right. to open up doors in our life right. and close doors in our life, Lord, mm. close this door to this relationship. Mm. Lord, close this door to the to this job. Mm. Lord, open up this door for a new promotion, for a new job, for more finding. Lord, open up this door so that I can be married. You're telling me mm. and you're telling us mm. that he has given us the key instead mm. of waiting on him to open it, that we have the power and the authority to stick the key in the hook and turn it and open our own door. Right. Oh my God. Amen. See, <laughs> see, he, 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 he. She said, I just threw my pillow at you. Why need him? him? You oh Lord. She said, she said, Lord, give me them keys. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So so don't don't wear your knees out praying for doors open. Oh my gosh. God is sitting back looking at you like, now I already gave you the keys. What what are you praying for the door to open up for? That's good. I gave you the keys. That's the good. key is in your hand. Use the key, all right? Use the key, all right? So you don't have to continue to pray for the door, but pray for pray for the keys, all That's right? right? So he says, I'm going to give you what the keys, what was the keys to the kingdom of heaven, all right? Not the, just, not the keys to the local church. He said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, all right? Yes. Why? Because you were able to see what everybody else couldn't see. Mm. All right. And I don't get puffed up and get big headed because you saw it because you didn't see it on your own. The father revealed it to you. So now because you saw it. All right. Because <laughs> God had favor on you Talk. because God chose you. <laughs> yes. All right. Now I'm going to give you this key. All right. And yes. now I'm going to have allow you this authority to lock that door or either unlock that door. Yes. All right. Yes. To bind yes. or to loose. All right. Yes, yes. So now when we get when we when we really get the revelation of this, then we won't worry about the devil so much. Ah. All right. You won't worry about the devil so much. All right. Now, let's let's examine this key situation here. All right. This key in this door situation. Where 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 else in the Bible do we see about this key in this door? All right. Let's go to the book of Genesis. All right. You don't have to go there if you don't want to. Genesis, she's gonna put the scripture in there. All right. Because we we this train is moving. I don't want to slow it down. I don't want to. I don't want to stop. Don't stop the train. Let all right. it I don't want to stop the train. All right. And so now. Somebody put it in there. Genesis. All right. Genesis chapter seven. All right. In Genesis chapter seven, we see when Noah was building the ark. All right. And, and, and we all know the story about Noah. God told Noah to build this gigantic ark to take animals two by two, take unclean animals, take clean animals for sacrifice and he, he gather him and his uh, wife and children and their wives um, and then, um, you know, enter into the ark because it was going to rain. It was going to be a flood. Uh, he preached 120 years to the people. The people were hard-headed. They want to listen. And God said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. They want to be hard-headed. They want to listen. Put a door on the side of this ark. <laughs> All right. All right. See, so we're going back to them keys and doors. He said, put a door on the side of the ark. All right. Now, what was the purpose of the door on the side of the ark? The door on the side of the ark, the purpose of that door was so that human beings could enter in. Now, he didn't put doors, plural, on there. He put door, singular. All right, one door, one way. All right, he is the door. All right, if you catch, if you know the revelation. If you've seen the kingdom of God, then you know the revelation to that. All right, he he is the door. Jesus said, I am the door. All right, and, and if any man enter, they must come through me. All right, he said, so put me on, on the side of that ark there, uh, uh, Lord. Uh, I, I know you did a beautiful job building and you got the wall that's so pretty and beautiful, everything laid out, but get that saw over there. I want you to cut a hole in there. I want you to put me up there. All right. And now he said, I'm, I want to see who's going to come through me. Yeah. All right. So because you got to go through me. You got to go through me. So now, <laughs> now these people here, they, they, they're hard hearted, they're hard headed and, and, and their hearts were evil <laughs> continually. All right. Their hearts were evil continually. All right. So now uh, I'm giving them an opportunity to come through me. All right. To first of all, come to me and then come through me. Yeah. All right. So he said, put the door there. And so Noah obeyed and he built the door. He put the door there. And so uh, when the time came, when the fullness of time came, all right, uh, Noah, he told Noah, said, get your family and and, and y'all enter in. Uh-huh. All right. Now, when they entered in, Noah still turned around and, and pleaded with the people. All right. 
please come in. It's going to rain. I'm telling you, it's going to rain. I know you've never seen it before. My all right. God. I know yes. you've never seen it before. And that's what we're preaching now. Don't get discouraged, all you preachers on here tonight. And I'm not talking about licensed and ordained preachers. I'm talking about every witness on here. Don't get discouraged tonight because you've been preaching a message. All right. And if people had never seen it before, so they don't believe it. All right. But you know what's, what's going to happen because you have already seen the kingdom of God. All right. And you've already entered through the door. So you received the revelation and God's had favor on you and you hold the keys in your hand and you telling the people look i got the key right here if you want to come in i can open the can door open the door for you yes, all right the yes. door is right here jesus is right here and so he told us to build this put this door on here so they went inside the ark and the bible says all right that the people still didn't want to come in so jesus said i tell you what the bible says in verse 17 uh genesis 7 to 17 it said that god shut them in all right he said he shut noah in all right why because noah was righteous because he found favor in Noah, all right, because Noah was obedient, all right, so he blessed Noah and his family, and they were, what, saved, all right, come here, Joshua, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, Lord, all right, and then because of that, if you be saved, then your whole entire household will be saved, all right, don't worry about your children, because they're cutting up naked food right now, don't worry about that, all right, because God said he made a promise, emphatic promise, and he's a God that cannot lie and not slack concerning his promise. That's what Peter said. All right, he said uh, he watches over his word to perform it. So now the doors here, the Bible says that God shut him in. Yes, yes, yes. All right, yes. now I'm going to tell you something. All right, I'd rather be shut in than to be shut out. Mm. Lock uh, me in, all Jesus. All right, I'd rather be shut in than shut out. So yes. now look at the situation. Noah found favor in the sight of God. And where was Noah? In the ark, in the kingdom. All right. Uh, the ark represented the kingdom of God. Uh, all right. It it, 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 it it represented, it was a type of garden, if you will. All right. So notice in, in also in Genesis, when, when God uh, had the garden, he put man there and Adam and Eve and told them to tend the garden and all that good stuff and all that. And they ended up getting kicked out of the garden. All right. So now Noah is coming with another replica of the garden. All right. So you see here, God had already prepared it. He told Noah to build it. He built it and fashioned it and put it gopher wood and all this other stuff. So many cubits and all that stuff like he told him to. And then he said, now bring the animals in there. All right. So he brought the animals and the vegetation and all that good stuff in there, all the yes. food that they would need. All right. For the journey, put it all in there. And then what? He told Noah, said, now you enter in. All right. So now you notice what he did in creation. He said he, he put the stars and the, the sun and moon in place and the firmaments and the heavens and all that stuff. The grass, the fowls, the beasts of the field, the, the, uh, 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 the, the fish and the sea and all that good stuff. And then he said, well, come here. Let me go and fashion this man out of this dust. Mm. All right. This dirt and then breathe into him. And he became a living soul, a nephesh. He became uh, he put the ruach in him and he became the nephesh, a living soul. All right. So then he went inside of him. So let me go let me put this boy to sleep because he, he he by himself out here. I can't have him like that. So now he put him to sleep and, and went into and snatched a rib by him. And then it came for what? Whoa, man. All right. So now. All right. Now we, 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 we have we have population. We have the kingdom. All right. But then the people that were out there that Noah was trying to tell to come in, what happened? They were hard hearted. They were hard headed. They, their hearts were evil continually. All right. So God said, OK, here's the kingdom and, 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 and here is the door. And now you have a choice. They chose not to come in. And what happened? They got shut out. All right. So don't get up tight. I know we, we 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 love people. God put it in our heart to love people. All right. Yes. But sometimes people just have to bump their head. All right. Sometimes people have to bump their heads. All right. And I'm not saying give up on, on people and, and, and as a whole, but sometimes you have to give up on the individuals. All right. When 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 you have individuals that you are with them, and, and then don't get discouraged in that too, because sometimes that's not the whole case. Because sometimes God is just using you to water or maybe using you to plant. All right. And so you plant and you move on. All right. And then or you pour the water and then you move on and then God will give the increase. But overall, we, we love people that's and right. we desire for people to be where in the kingdom. Yes. All right. And that's why the devil hates us so much. And I'm talking to this group right here. That's why the devil hates us so much. Why? Because we're not about the church business. We're about the kingdom business. Yeah, you got to have a kingdom. All right. Mindset. We're about the kingdom of God business. All right. Why? Because we have seen the kingdom of God. All right. And, and we and what we deal with, we deal in deliverance. And the Bible says that if a demon spirit comes out of a man, know what? That the kingdom has come upon him. 
All right. This is kingdom work that we're doing right here. And that's why it's so much rebuttal. That's why it's so much frustration. That's why it's so much warfare. That's why it's so much entanglements. That's why, because we're doing kingdom work. The devil never tried to stop the church. All right. Or church leadership. He always tried to stop what? The kingdom from being made manifest. Mm, that's All right. the objective. All right. See, so you've never seen the devil trying to kill the Pharisees. All right. The church leaders. He tried to kill who? The kingdom. Jesus. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. All right. And he came revealing the kingdom. Wow, that's good. Yeah. All right. And so and that's who they tried to kill. They don't they don't care about the church. You can name your church, whatever you want to call it. You, you can build it however you want to build it. All right. But if it's a kingdom message inside, that's what the devil is after. All right. Mm. If there's some kingdom people, if the kingdom of God is inside that building, that's what the devil is after. Yeah, All right. Yeah. That's what he's trying to stop and destroy. Praise the Lord. And so, and, and we got to be vigilant, amen, and, and continue to take that stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So let's get back to Peter. Let's go back over here, Matthew. Peter, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. All right. That's, that's why we win right there. That's why we win because God has already spoken concerning us. All right. That the gates of hell, the very gates of hell should not prevail against all right, the kingdom of God, the true church, all right, should not prevail against it, all right, and so then now, he said, now, I'm, I'm going to give you these keys to the kingdom, that whatsoever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven, all right, and whatsoever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven, all right, so that's where we are tonight, all right, that's where we are tonight, is that we have keys tonight, all right, keys carry authority, keys give us access, all right, and so there are many doors to this kingdom that God has established today. And so, and that's what God have called us to. If you want to know what your calling is, your, your calling is, all right, to uh, open up the doors to the kingdom to those who are not a part of the kingdom. All right. That's what we're called to do. I don't care how you do it. If you preach it, if you evangelize it, if you witness it, if you cast it out, if you prophesy it. Of whatever you do, whatever God has gifted you to do, however you do it, uh, do it that the doors of the kingdom will be open so that people will be able to enter in. All right. And so and it's a good thing that we got some warriors on here. Why? Because the Bible said that the kingdom suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. We ain't playing no games. We ain't playing no games. The Bible said that the kingdom suffered violence, but we ain't worried about the violence. Why? Because the kingdom suffered violence and take it by force. All right, we take it by force. All right. So now we see here, let's let's examine what the keys did. Let's let's take a look at what the keys have, have done and how the keys are in operation. All right. Now Peter was the first one to receive this revelation out of all of the apostles. All right. He received this revelation from the Father. And because he received it, Jesus told him, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. All right. So now when we look at Peter's life, all right, we see here that Peter was the first one to open up the door to the kingdom of heaven. All right, how did he do that? The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter two, that on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached that day and over 3,000 souls were saved. All right, he opened up the kingdom. All right, that's what the keys do. The keys open up the kingdom and give people access. All right, you, those of you that have bought homes or have rented homes, or whatever, you have that, that realtor that will take you and they will show you the house. All right. But when they get there, you can't just walk in the house. Why? Because the door is locked. And so you have to have the, you have to open, have the key to be able to enter in. And so now I don't care how many keys you have in your pocket, un unless you are a thief or, 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 or some kind of crooked locksmith. All right. The, 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 the keys that you have in your pocket are not going to open that door. Why? Because it's the wrong set of keys. All right. But Jesus said, I give you a master key. All right. And, and so that realtor, whether it be a combination lock box or whatever it be, she has access to it or he has access to it. Why? Because they have been given the authority to open it up. All right. And so what they do when they open the door, they tell you, come on in. Oh, and they show you, I gave money to Shania. Where she at? All right. And so now, and so they, they, they give you access. All right. And that's what, we, that's what our job is, is to be spiritual realtors. All right, to go across all this real estate that God owns, you know, he owns it all. He said, I own the cattle of a thousand hills. 
Psalm 24 said, the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. And then he said, the gold is mine, the silver is mine, whatever, it, you know, things that are in the earth, on the earth, above the earth, underneath the earth, it all belongs to me. So now that I have it, all right, I'm going to give you the authority to have access to it. I'm going to give you the keys. In other words, God said, I'm going to give you the key to my house. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you the key to my house. And so now uh, that, that he has given the key, all right, Peter exemplified that on the day of Pentecost. All right. So he said uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, he preached one sermon and over 3000 people got saved. Now, this wasn't just any kind of people. They were Jewish people. There were 3000 Jews that got saved. Now, check this out. This is the kind of authority and the keys that Jesus gives. Remember, Jesus said, because I go away to be with the father, greater work shall you do. All right, so now here it is. Peter preached one sermon and saved 3,000 people that Jesus couldn't even reach. Y'all didn't catch that. I went over here for a minute there. You can get it in a minute. When you lay down and get ready to go to sleep tonight, they're going to come to you. All right, just don't fall out of bed. All right, so now, all right, so he reached ones that Jesus couldn't reach. Remember, remember Jesus said in the book of John, he said, I came unto my own, my own received me not, but as many as will receive me, I, unto them I gave the power to become the sons of God. All right, so now Peter preached one sermon and, and 3,000 Jews got saved. All right, so now that was Acts chapter 2. Let's look, let's move on over to Acts chapter 8. All right, we see another situation where Peter began to preach, him and a couple of other apostles, and they began to preach to the Samaritans. And the Bible says that they all received the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, he unlocked the door to the kingdom, and they were able to have access through Peter. All right. And so then uh, we go to Acts chapter 10. We see again that Peter brought the gospel of the kingdom to a Roman centurion soldier house. All right. And it says that they all received the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so that's, that's where we are, the, the keys to the kingdom. And that's what God has given us. And that's, and that's what I come to tell you tonight, just my, my, my entire assignment that that, that, that let you know that God has given you a master key. We don't we don't have to cry our eyes out begging and asking and 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 acting begging God for a, a door to open that He's already given us key to. All right, we just have to learn our spiritual authority and learn what we have been given access to. All right, the Bible says that Jesus, I mean, came in the flesh and He humbled Himself and took upon Himself no reputation and made Himself a little lower than angels and became a servant. All right. And, and then said, and still he counted it not robbery to become equal with God. All right. But now the Bible says also in the book of Romans that we talk about us, the Gentiles were once alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. All right. But we now have received what the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba father. All right. And now we are what heirs with Jesus Christ and not heirs only, but joint heirs with him. All right, so if, if Jesus thought it not robbery to become equal with God, then we are heirs of God along with Jesus Christ. So everything that God gave the Father, uh, we have the same access. All right, mm -hmm. Jesus, okay, the Father gave me a key. All right, I'm going to pass it on to you, all right, because I'm already in here. So I'm going to give it to you, all right, because you have seen the kingdom. Of now you are part of the kingdom, so now I'm going to give you the access to open up the door to let whoever in that you will. All right. And so now we have that power. We have that authority. We have that access to the kingdom of God. All right. So when you need a blessing, all you have to do is open up the door. You have the key to unlocking. Now, he didn't put no specifics on it or categorize it. He said what? Whatsoever. No limit. No limitation. All right. It's not categorized. He said whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. All right. So you have the power. You have the authority. That's why demons are subject to you. <laughs> because the demon know what you got in your pocket. He know you got them keys. All right. And he know he don't have access to what you have access to. All right. So you have the authority. All right. To open, to bind, and to loose. All right. So don't, don't wear your eyes out and, and wear your knees out. All right, because you already have the power. And what we got to understand too is, and I know he probably said this already, but what we're binding on earth and loosing on earth is what was already done in heaven, but we're just coming into agreement with what was already done. 
And mm-hmm. so we have to understand that we have to utilize the power that he's given us with that key to mm-hmm. unlock those doors. We have to utilize it. Sometimes we, I think sometimes we make, uh, we make this thing hard. Mm-hmm. We make it real hard. Mm-hmm. Like we're, we're so much into our mind. We're so much into ourselves that we really forget that we got the greatest thing he did for us was give us power mm-hmm. and authority. Right. We have power and authority. Listen, mm-hmm. he gave us the power to trample over serpents right. and scorpions. Mm-hmm. And if they bite us, they can't even hurt us. If they inject poison into us, it can't even hurt us. Mm-hmm. If we're if we have the power to cast out demons, we have we have so much power. We have the mm-hmm. ability to speak a word, and that mm-hmm. word has to manifest and perform. Right. That word has to go out and grab. That word mm-hmm. has to go out and conquer. That word has to go, uh, be planted in the ground and grow up and become a seed and manifest on our behalf. Amen. That's how powerful it is. You, you're, you're, we have so much power and authority, the keys that he has given us that we can speak to a situation in our life and it can change. It has to change. It must change mm-hmm. in Jesus name, but you have to know how to utilize the key. Right. If I take that key and I stick it in upside down, that key is not going to be effective for me. Right. If I take that key and I stick it in sideways, that key is not going to go in. So you got to know how to use the key. And then you have to not be fearful of using the key. A lot of times that's our problem, too, is we are fearful to use what God has given us. Mm hmm. We're afraid to use what God has given us. He's saying, look, daughter, look, son, I've already given you the key. That's like my daughter, my um, 10-year-old for years. She's been begging us for a house key. Mom, mm-hmm. can I just get a key to the house? Can I get a key? And I was like, you're not going to be responsible with the key. Some of mm-hmm. us are irresponsible with the keys that God has given us. Mm-hmm. Right. And see, the reason why <laughs> we didn't give her the keys, like I said, because she's not responsible enough. She's not mature enough. Because when you have, when, when you have been given keys and you're not mature enough, then you end up losing the key. And then what? Somebody can get access to what God's given you. All right. And so, and that's how the devil come in when you give him what? Legal right. All right. When you give him access. All right. And so, and that's, that's, that's what was happening. So Peter received this revelation. All right. So Jesus, all right, you ready now, boy, you ready for it. All right. <laughs> and I'm going to give it to you. So now here, here, take these keys, take these keys, take this authority. All right. Take this access. And then whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Amen. God bless you, brother. Pastor Mark Holliday. God bless you. Good to see you on tonight. Um, I'm, I'm, I got to come out there and get some uh, get on that grill with you. Amen. Uh, they, they, oh, I thought about the, them, uh, them lamb chops and, and that brisket. It just took my mind out. I'm sorry. I'm coming back. All right. So now the key. <laughs> Of the kingdom of of, uh, of of heaven, all right? The keys to the kingdom of heaven. That's what we have. We have the power, we have the ability, and we have the authority to unlock heaven, yes. all right? To, to, for people to gain access. And, and seeing everybody can't see the kingdom of God. Jesus even just talked and gave some descriptions about uh, uh, ways that and reason that people couldn't see the kingdom of God, all right? He says, you know, about a man that... Um, that was full of himself, lifted up in pride, all right? Uh, James talks about and said, uh, a double-minded man, all right? Let that man re- think that he'll receive anything from the Father, all right? So he has no access, all right? He has no access, all right? Because there's no stability, there's no accountability, there is no uh, maturity, there is no responsibility, and, 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 and there's no discipline. So mm-hmm. the, all of that come along with, with, with having keys. All right. Mm. Because remember, when I was working at that hotel, if I was the wrong kind of person, I could have just walked up in the rooms in the middle of the night, three or four o'clock in the morning, tiptoe burglar, you know, midnight rapist or whatever. All right. I could have done that. But but I had to I had to be mature. I had to be the right kind of person for the job. All right. All right. And so, so so what that tells me is you got to be responsible with the keys of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You can't just loosely go and, and do what you want to do and be irresponsible with it. You have to be responsible. You got to be responsible. Amen. You got to be responsible with the keys. Amen. I know I, I took off and I, I, I launched off real quick. All right. But, but in, you know, this, this, these sessions are interactive. Are you, you guys want to add in or you have any, any questions or you want, uh, you want to take it from here? You know, let me, I'll let it go. You, if you can take it from here. <laughs> Anybody got anything? Any questions? April, go ahead. Hold on. Before April speak, I saw your comment. You say you want to be a, uh, what you say? You, what did you say? A you said realtor. our spiritual realtor. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. Look, that's a t-shirt. <laughs> a, a spiritual, spiritual realtor. realtor. Yes. But why are you talking? I'm just thinking like going back to uh, uh, Acts when Peter that day and mm -hmm. you know how when people started murmuring mm -hmm. when the, the Holy Spirit fell, mm -hmm. oh man, these people are drunk and they this and that and the other. And I thought about how Peter, I, when I think about it, I think about him standing up and saying, pretty much summarizing, he said, okay, y'all put Jesus to death. You know, he reminded them of, of how, how they were responsible for what happened to Jesus. Like, so, I was, and he was kind of not reprimanding, but he was letting them know, like, mm -hmm. this is what it is. This is who Jesus was. You know, we aren't, you know, he was, you know, and I thought about how the keys, sometimes I think with the keys, it's going to come an altercation. It's mm -hmm. not, you're not gonna be able to just go to the door, unlock it, and it'd be a celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm realizing that Ira said something the other day that was powerful. He said, most times God endorse, doesn't endorse you with celebration, but he mm -hmm. endorses you with separation. Mm -hmm. Because you notice yeah. most times when you go to do something, mm -hmm. the transition, the separations, the unlock it, it, it's not, there's not a big party. Most right. times there's fear there. Most times there's a, there's a hesitancy there. Most times there's people aren't, aren't in the back rooting for you. You know, yeah. so even in this moment with the keys, mm -hmm. they are going to unlock that door, come knowing on. you have the power and the authority to do so is going to come right. with people, the enemy, to try to make you feel like you don't have the authority to unlock it, like you said. And mm -hmm. Peter, even though those 3,000 souls came, he had to let him know. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all, you guys put Jesus to death. He laid his mm -hmm. life down. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? He let him know. That's what I loved about Peter. Mm -hmm. As he was always quick to be like, no, nah, let me constantly remind you of mm -hmm. who he was. And no matter what, I'm unlocking this door. Yes. I'm coming through this door. <laughs> so don't get me started, y'all. But I, that's so good. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and that's good. That's right. You know, and, and when you, while you were speaking that, I, I, I was reminded when, when, when Joshua, you know, gave 10 men some keys and told them to go over and spy out the land. Uh -huh. all right, he gave them access, all right, authority, gave them the key to open and unlock. All right, now, ten, uh, eight of them, I mean, no, I'm sorry, it was 12 of them, all right, and, and six of them, no, not six, I'm 10 of them, all right, I'm getting my numbers mixed up. 10 of them had the key, and like you said, but they were, they were fearful of what they unlocked the door and opened it up to. Mm -hmm. All right. They said there's giants over there. Yeah. All right. And, 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 and we, in our own, we, we see ourselves as grasshoppers in, our, in their sight. All right. Yeah. Not that, not that they see you as grasshoppers. We say we see ourselves as grasshoppers Yeah. All right? in yeah. their sight. All right. Now the people over there were already in terror. All right. Because they already had testified to Rahab that, you know, we heard about the terror of your God and how he parted the Red Sea and how he, uh, won the battle over Egypt and you came out with all of the wealth of, of Egypt. All right. So he, he, he saw all of that. All right. But there were two, all right, that understood their authority and they were disciplined enough. They were mature enough and they was ready and willing to handle what was on the other side of the door. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Joshua and Caleb said, look, we're more than able. We're ready and willing. We're more than able to go and take them, overtake. Let's go right now. All right. We're ready. And that's the attitude that we got to have. All right. When you open that door, you got to be ready to deal with what's on the other side of the door. And you don't have to be, you don't have to worry about it and be afraid of it. Why? Because God has already gone before you. Yes. All right. Come here. Come here. David. The battle is not yours, it's saith the Lord. Lord. <laughs> it's mine. All right. Even though you own the battlefield, the battle belongs to me. All right. And I'm going to tie this in with, with uh, uh, Sister April there. I watched the warfare class the other night. And, and I guess I, I saw you. All right. And she said, <laughs> All right, we have to settle this thing. All right, before we put this armor on, all right, it's, it's in his power and his might. All right, so the battle is not mine. The responsibility is not on me. All right, this thing belonged to God. All right, so God, you got me here and you've already gone before me. So I'm just going to rest in it and let you handle it. All right, what? Come, oh, oh, here we go again. 
I posted it the other day. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. All right. Where we're weak at, where we're vulnerable at, that's where God shines at. All right. Yeah. And that's why it's good sometimes. Uh, that's why Paul said, he said it was good that we were afflicted. afflicted. Yeah. Why? Because that brings us to the end of ourselves. Uh -huh. All right. And once you come to the end of yourself, that's where God stand up and take charge. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Now we will win a lot of battles a lot quicker if we come to the end of ourselves a lot quicker. All right. Uh -huh. Just, just let it be resolved in your spirit. Let it be resolved <laughs> in your spirit. Like, okay, look, I, I can't do anything with this. All right. This is way too big for me. This is above my pay grade. Lord, you got to handle this. All right. Because it belonged to you. Yeah. And so, and that's, that's what we have to be. That's what we have to be with it. All right. So along with those keys, it has to be responsibility. It has to be accountability. All right. Because think about it now, when I was working at that hotel now, every door that I opened, it was recorded in the system that I opened that door. Uh -huh. What time I opened it. All right. And, and, and what time I closed it. <laughs> It was in the system. All right. So don't think you, 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 you getting over on God and you, and, and you got to up on everybody because, because you have the key. All right. Don't think that. All right. Because it's on record. All right. Of how you handle the keys. All right. So now if I would have opened that door at the wrong time and done the wrong thing. All right. So I had to be mindful of when I opened the door, when I locked that door, because if I would have went in at the wrong time, thinking that I was getting away, all right, then when they, the people came back who had rightful authority over the place and said, this is missing, all right, then they're going to go in the system. So let's, who, let's see who entered the building. All right. They see my key pop up. Now I'm responsible. All right. So we have to, be, we have to, we have to make sure that we're, we're living a consecrated life with these keys. All right. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Live in such a way to where you won't bring a reproach. All right. On the one who gave you the keys. All right. And that's why we can't get ourselves all tangled up in all kind of all kind of things of the world. All right. Because Peter said it. That was, that was Peter, the one that received the keys first. He said, All right, a good soldier, or was it Paul? A good soldier does not entangle himself or concern himself with the affairs of the world. All right, because he's seeking to please him who made him a soldier. My focus is on pleasing God. All right, I don't care what you're thinking about. All right, I don't care why you feel like I did what I did. The brother called me today. He's like, man, it, it got to be a God because I ain't never had anybody to show me that kind of love. All right, and I'm like, yes, God will change your heart, man. He's like, he's like, I just can't see in my mind any kind of way that I can extend that amount of love to any person that I don't know. All right. And I'm like, well, when you get God in your heart, you'll learn how you'll, you'll know how to extend that type of love because that's the kind of good love that God has. Yeah. All right. That agape love. And so, you know, and, 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 and God will, and we have to live in such a way. We have to live in integrity. All right. We got to do the right thing when nobody's looking. That's right. All right. Why? Because we got keys and you can't do anything with the keys. You just can't, live recklessly with the keys, all right? Because what happened is that you end up just like those with Noah. When he put the door up there, Noah got shut in and they got shut out. Jesus. All right. And then you'll, you'll, and then you'll go there on that day. And then he's going to say, and you're going to say, I cast out demons in your name. I prophesied in your name. Yeah. I laid hands on the sick in your name. All right. I went and visited the sick in your name. Yeah. I went to the jail and visited the prisoners in your name. Yeah. And then he's going to look and say, depart from, depart from me. You work of iniquity. I never knew you. All right. Why? Because you live recklessly with the keys. We got to, we got to live. Uh, we we got to have right living. We got to remain in, in the Holy ghost. We got to remain in right standing with God and live circumspectly. Uh, like the Bible says. All right. We have kingdom authority. We have kingdom authority and we have ability. All right. So, the, this here might cut out some of our prayer time, but don't cut the prayer time out, but add something else in there. All right. Stop praying for the door when God is giving you the key. All right. April, you got something else? I'm not going to say nothing else after this. I promise, guys. Let, yeah, him, use right. Let him use it. <laughs> but yo, every time we do have these uh, Bible studies and all of that, 
sorry, heavy. I love how it points all the way back to the father, right? And so you sit here, I don't know about y'all, but it makes you examine yourself in your heart. It reminds you like, this is about Jesus. And I thought about when you said being reckless with the keys, mm -hmm. not only is God gonna help hold me accountable just for my actions, my character, my choices, but how I affect the souls with those keys. Yeah. My, the way that I, I'm handling those keys is affecting someone else's life. Right. And, and the Lord says that if you cause, you know, anybody to stumble, you know, the scripture, you might as well put a millstone around your neck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's that serious, you know? So I'm sitting here in my mind, like, God, you know, forgive me. Mm -hmm. If I have been reckless with the keys, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If I have been irresponsible, if I haven't taken it seriously, if I have, have been concerned with the affairs of the world, you know what I'm saying? Lord, forgive me, help me, God. Mm -hmm. To get back in right standing, you know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, it makes you, I don't know. Anybody else feel like that? Because that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I mean, it, it really does. It's so. It, it, I was going to say, and it makes you think too, like when we were talking about Noah having the key and God put the door on the ark for the people to be able to come in. That's the way that Noah and his family went in. If he was reckless with the key, Okay, if he was reckless with the key, he could have decided he could have made a choice just like Jesus. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do this. You know, I, it's too much. It's too hard. People don't believe me. People aren't listening. I'm trying to prepare them. I'm trying to warn them. They're talking about me. They're ridiculing me. And then he could have questioned, mm -hmm. God, is it really you speaking to me? You know how we do when God has gave us a key. And he, look, matter of fact, um, it was, I'm going to tell you who it was. It was somebody on here tonight that messaged me and said out of faith, they were operating out of faith and they went and bought a key because they knew that God was about, they were trusting God to bless them with keys. I can't remember if it was to a house or a car, but they said they were trusting God. So by faith, they went and bought a key. And so what if, what if Noah was like, you know what? They talking about me. They ridiculing me. This, you know, God, are you real? Is this really what you want me to do? This is crazy. Build a boat this mm -hmm. big, this tall, this wide. Really? I'm, I got to take all, you know, if he was questioning it, questioning mm -hmm. God, he could have easily just said, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to do it. And not that God wouldn't have raised somebody else up. Not mm -hmm. that, you know, God wouldn't have did whatever he was going to do or his, his, uh, that it wouldn't have been fulfilled. But the simple fact that he could have been reckless and through his recklessness, could have what could have aborted the whole plan of God right right and so think about the keys that God has given you some doors that he wants you to open mm -hmm. some and, and when I say doors I'm talking about naturally and spiritually mm -hmm. think of businesses that you have to open mm -hmm. and that the people that are going to be blessed by those businesses but because you are questioning God you're too much in your head mm -hmm. you're too much in yourself those doors aren't opening Think about the ministries, all of y'all. I know every single one of you. I've talked to every single one of you at one point or another, at least every day. All 20 of y'all, 18 of y'all, however many of y'all is on here. And how many of y'all have ministry locked up inside of you right now? You've been called to prophesy. You've been called uh, to pastor. You've been called to minister to the sick individually. You've been called to do all of this stuff. You've been called to write books. You've been mm -hmm. called, you know, you have all of these gifts on the inside. You've been called to open up a restaurant. You've been called to start this, uh, whatever that business is. But because you question God and because you're scared and because you're scared to step out on the water, Peter, and because you're, you're afraid that the voice that you're, that's speaking to you is not God, but it's of the devil, which a lot of times it is because he's trying to mess with your mind and get you to abort the process. He's trying mm -hmm. to get you to break up the keys and, and hide the keys and put the keys away for a later time. Lord, I know I got this key to this lockbox, but I'm going to put it away for a later time. I'm going to wait to see what's in it. So so now we're aborting the very promises and the very things of God. And there's people that are attached to the key that you have. Look, there's a key, there's a key that my husband has on the key ring that goes to our church. And because the church is new, the building that we got is new. I don't have a key yet. So if he leaves that key at home, which he did Sunday by accident, <laughs> if he leaves that key at home, then that stops the other people from being able to get into the building because he's the key holder. 
<laughs> if he takes that key with him to Greensboro tonight and forgets to give it to me, you got to release. Oh, you'll be maybe you'll be home. It's but you, but if he forgets to give me that key, then we can't. The people can't get in the door because now he has taken what belonged or not. It didn't belong to him, but it what was available for everybody else. Now that door is closed, mm. and so we cannot be fearful. And we cannot withhold utilizing the keys that God has given us. Why? Because there are people that are waiting on you to unlock the door. Right. right. How can you how can you supply jobs to people who are jobless when you refuse to open up the business? Mm. How can you do it? How can you supply services to people if you refuse to go to school when God has given you not only the power and the authority, but the ability and the intellect and the time? Some of us are just sitting around and all we got is time. Mm. And God has been pushing you and telling you for a long time, I've given you the keys. Mm. I just need you to walk in the door. Right. But because we're afraid of what's on the other side of the door, we're afraid of those people that's talking. We're afraid that it might be too late. We're afraid of how we're going to look. We're afraid of how we're going to feel. We're afraid of how much warfare that we might experience when we walk through the door. We're afraid of, why are we afraid of warfare when he's given us the keys of the kingdom? Mm-hmm. Why are we afraid of warfare when he said whatsoever you bind on earth? Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind every attack, every plot, every plan, every assignment. I bind every word that you speak to my mind. I bind every attack on my body of infirmity. I bind you coming against my marriage. I bind you coming against my children. I bind you coming against my finance. Why are you mad? You got the keys. You got the keys. He said, and not only, uh, not only do I did I give you the power to bind it, but now I'm giving you the power to lose wealth. Remember, he said, what did he say uh, Saturday night when we were teaching? Stop asking God for money. Stop asking him to be rich. Start asking for wealth. Wealth will take you a lot, a lot further. So now I've given you the keys to loose wealth in your life, loose health, loose prosperity, to loose not just a sane mind, but he said, I've given you not a, he said, I've given you a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So now I have the ability to loose soundness in my mind in the midst of confusion and chaos. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've given you the ability to loose a spirit of peace in the, in the midst of hell and confusion in my house, Mm -hmm. in my, on my job. Yes. Yes. I've given you that power. And so because we're so fearful, we don't know what it looks like. We're walking and we're being afraid and we're walking and operating out of fear. When he said, I've given you power, love Mm. and a sound mind, Mm. love and a sound mind. Mm. Yes. We got to use the keys. Yes. All right. Now, with that being said, be careful who you make copies of your keys and give it to. Ah. All right, be careful of that. Because we're in a generation now where we have a lot of Simon the Sorcerers. They don't want God, but they want what God has. All right. They don't, they don't want to seek his face. They want his hand. Mm. All right. Simon the Sorcerer, he, he told the apostle, he said, look, I want, can you sell me this Holy Ghost that you're operating in? See, they want to come up the other way. They, what they did, they put another door on the ark. Remember, there's one door. Jesus said, I'm the door. There's only one way. But see, they put another door on the ark. All right. They want to slip in the back door. All right. They want to slip in the back door. And so and that's 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 our world now. That's our generation now. All right. Where it's so full of sorcery, so full of witchcraft to where people want uh, the things of God. Uh-uh, there you go. Right there. The scripture says the day is going to come when they will stop worshiping the creator and worship creation. Creation, yes. All right. That's that's all you see that's happening nowadays. All right. So somebody gave away a key. All right. They made a copy of a key and somebody got a copy of it and tried to imitate. All right. Tried to act like they had the authority. Tried mm. to act as if they owned the property. All right. But when they really didn't. But when the owner shows up, all right, the Bible says in Revelation, he said, when he when I come, all right, if you're filthy, be filthy still. If you're holy, be holy still. Why? Because it's going to be too late then. So now we have a lot of counterfeiters, all right, who, ha- who have gotten access to a couple of keys and made some copies of them, and they're trying to take over what belongs to God, what God has given you access to, all right? So we have to, we have to be mindful of that. Be mindful of that, all right? Don't give your key away. Because the thing about it is, I have some car keys in my pocket. Now, I can drive up the Walmart up the street, 
and it's a parking lot full of cars. All right. And I can pull out my key and I can hit the button, but it's only going to lock one car. Why? Because that's the one I've been given authority over. That's the one I've been given access to. So what belongs to you belongs to you. All right. My key is not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to steal your blessing. All right. I'm not going to be able to steal what God has for you. I'm not going to be able to steal your purpose. I'm not going to be able to steal your anointing. Yes. All right. Because what God has given you, it belongs to you. And so that enemy that's been lying to you and saying that he was going to come and he's going to take this and he's going to take that. Can't and I'm going to take that. ownership of this and that and the other. You have to stand up and say, look, I got the master key. Yeah, he right. perpetrating. I got the master key. He All perpetrating. Right. He got the fake. He, he got the he, counterfeit he got key. Remember, the keys was, oh God, the keys was taken from him. <laughs> Jesus said, I went to hell right. and I took the keys of the kingdom. Why? Because yes. he doubted it, about it. He right. took the keys of the kingdom and the sting out of death. Right, because he stole them. So anything <laughs> that the enemy tries to hold over your head and try to tell you, well, you can't have that. You mm -hmm. can't do that. You can't go there. I got the keys, baby. They were taken from you. You are trespasser. You got to go. Right. <laughs> right. So he had he had a false sense of authority. He's he stole the keys. All right. But but Jesus took them back. And so we have the victory through Thank Jesus God. Christ. Amen. All right. Let me open back up. April, go ahead. I know I said I wasn't gonna say nothing else, but this is my last time for real. <laughs> so I was thinking y'all because you talk about the keys you, you, what you were saying you got to make sure when the Lord gives you your keys and I'm mm -hmm. talking to me too it's important to be confident not arrogant but mm -hmm. be confident in the key that he gave you right. be confident when you walk to that door and you unlock it because there are going to be people I'll just say the enemy through different means ways that are going to try to tell you that key don't go there. Amen. That key doesn't belong to you. This is how you put the key in the door. Not that door, that door. You mm -hmm. have to be set. No, this is what the Lord is telling me to do. This is how he told me to do it. And I'm not going to let anybody take me off of what his plan is. Not right. your plan, not they plan, not even my own plan, but what right. he says. Yes. Because it's, yes. it's important. Because you've got to be confident within God and what he's calling you to do. Because right. everybody, it, th there are going to be things that are going to right. come in your ear and tell you, no, nah, that, ain't, that ain't the way you should go. And guess when you do that, it ain't going to go over well. Right. Amen. So we need to prepare. You know, we need to prepare. Like you said, this thing is a war. Why are we, like you said, why are we surprised when warfare happens? Why are, why, why are we shocked that we can't just walk straight up to the door, put the key in, and then there's a party on the other side? Right. Why, why, why do we think that? I'm right. talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But for real, for real, be confident yes. in the key, April, right. and what God has called you to do. When I put this key in this door, this is how he told me to do it. Mm -hmm. Because if not, then I'm double-minded. I'm, right. I'm, I'm floating this way. I'm floating that way based on what, what this does and says, what that does and says. And, and you may lose some, some friends. You may lose some people. You may lose some stuff along the way because you are like this. But that right. does not mean that you need deliverance. That does not mean that you, you're suffering from a spirit because you are saying, no, this is what God called me to do. I'm going to do it the way he called me to do it. It doesn't mean yeah. that I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with that or dealing with this. I'm not going to let nobody word curse you. Don't let nobody word curse you. Amen. Anyway. Amen. Yes, yes. But y'all yes. feel what I'm saying, though. <laughs> we got people throwing virtual throwing pillows, pillows right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. Amen. And then I'm done. Amen. 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 God, God bless you, uh, Pastor Mark. Holl Pastor Holiday, uh, you say you got to go. Good night. But thank you for joining in. You looking here? He's on Facebook. Yeah, no, but I'm looking through the oh, screen, okay, so, okay, I, okay. so I'll be looking straight over there. Got you, got you. All right. Anybody else? Wait. Any other questions? That's good. That's good. Comments. Right there, that's good. Anybody want to add some fuel on the fire? Hey, Amen. I'm seeing all this stuff. I see my brother Ira jumped on. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Tiffany said, "I'm speechless." <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You know, before we end this, I hear the Lord prophetically saying everybody needs to grab a key. If you, whether you on camera or not, and um, Sarita, we're going to hold the keys for you. I don't want her to move. But everybody needs to grab a key. I need a key. I got some keys. Everybody needs to grab a key. Everybody grab a key. 
Y'all got y'all's keys? Hey, man, Jakira, if you don't have a key, just, just put your hand up like as if you Act have like a key. like you got one. Call those things that be not as though they were. In the name of Jesus, keys. Because God is about to open some doors in your life. He said, I've given you the keys, not only to the kingdom, any key. It don't matter what key, Dominique, any key. Just grab you a key. And I prophetically speak over every single one of your lives that as you go in faith, as you believe and go in faith, just as God has given you the keys of the kingdom, I prophesy that every door that belongs to you will be open when it comes to ministries, when it comes to your finances, when it comes to education, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to your children, in the name of Jesus, every door that God saw fit, that he sees fit to open will open. And every, every door that needs to be closed now, prophetically close it. Just take it and close it. Stick the key in and close it. Every door that needs to be closed, shut it and close it now. Lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. And every door that you need open, go ahead and open it. Stick the key in and turn to the left. Unlock it. In Jesus' right name. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. And I want you to prophetically declare over your life, whatever it is, you don't have to be as long. You're on mute. So go ahead and start speaking that thing. Father, I unlock every door of and begin to unlock it. Every door of finances, every door of education. Father, I unlock now dreams. I unlock visions. I unlock provision for the vision now in Jesus' name. Father, I unlock finances to fund, God, the business that you have given me in the name of Jesus. Come on, activate in the name of Jesus. This yes. is activation. Do it in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Lord, un unlock, unlock. I unlock now. You've given me the power to unlock. I unlock the keys of wealth. I unlock with these keys the door of uh, uh, of health in the name of Jesus, good health yes. in the name of Jesus. I unlock now everything attached to my mind. I speak sound mind now. I unlock that door of soundness. I unlock the door of wellness, of oneness in the name of Jesus. I unlock it. 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 Businesses, I unlock it. In the name of Jesus, I unlock it. Whatever it is, unlock it. Father, I'm looking for a husband. I unlock that door now and I make myself available. I become vulnerable before you in the name of Jesus. Yes. I hear somebody, they just typed in, I unlock the door of a sound mind in Jesus name. Jesus That's name. right. That's right. You got to begin to speak it. We're not coming into agreement with nothing negative. And now I lock the doors of negativity in my life. I lock, I lock out every hater now in Jesus' name. I lock them out now Shut in the out. name Shut of Jesus. Out. I lock them out. I lock them out. Those who come against my destiny, I lock them out. Those who come against my purpose, I'm locking you out with the key now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every attack on my finances, I lock that door in the mighty name of Jesus. In the, name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so as you begin to prophetically speak that over your life, in the name of Jesus, I speak Amen. that those doors will begin to open for you. Even this week, as we go through this week, it's only Tuesday. By Friday, I proclaim that at least one of those doors will unlock in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, provision to be made in Jesus' name. Those of you that are looking for a house, go get your keys. Go get your Amen. keys. Go get your keys. Those that need a place to stay, get your keys. Those of you now, not, not I'm not talking about people who got five and six cars, but if you're in desperate need of a car right now, okay, but we're going to use wisdom for it because God ain't going to give you no car and you ain't got no license. Blessing of the Lord, making okay? rich and has no sorrow. <laughs> he, he don't go outside the order of, of man. So if you ain't got no license, don't be talking about Lord, send me a car tomorrow, Jesus. No, get your okay, make sure first. you get your license first and then we're going to unlock the door for God to provide in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And it is so in Jesus' name. In Jesus, Jesus name. name. In the in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we unlock the door of purpose in your people. We unlock the door of purpose. 
in the name of Jesus. And as they walk through it, God, as they walk through it in faith, God, may everything, God, that you desire for them to have manifest in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, do it, Father. Do it, Father. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. You got to believe it. But you have the power. And you have the authority. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anybody else that did say te ana na mama masai. You did it about suka da baba basai. And then it is say ana na masai ta ta da baba kuda da basai. In the name of Jesus, I oh my God, how da basai? In the name of Jesus, I'm giving you power. And I believe it. And I'm giving you authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, no fear but boldness in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yeah, mm-hmm. she said, I, I locked the door of bitterness. There you go, begin mm-hmm. to begin to declare that over your life, whatever that thing is, lock it. Because mm-hmm. when you lock it, you're binding it. Mm-hmm. And when you unlock it, you're loosing it in the name of, in Jesus. The name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's what I was gonna say. Everybody that opened up something tonight, all right, make sure you go behind that and lock it. I mean, after you lock the opposite of that, after you unlock it. Amen. Yeah, there you go. I, I'll lock the door of offense. There you go. I lock it in Jesus' name. And if you lock it, you got the key so nobody else can't come behind they you and unlock it. You Only you. If 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 that thing, if that bitterness, if that offense, if that unforgiveness comes back, it's because you unlocked it or you gave them the key to unlock it. So keep mm-hmm. your keys hidden. Keep them protected. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I saw earlier in the chat someone said that it's hard to do the right thing when nobody's looking because you're so tempted to do the wrong thing. See, there's, there's a there's a, a funny thing about temptation. See, temptation is not as is as, as, as powerful as we think that it is. All right. Why? Because God said, in, I think it's the book of Corinthians. Um uh he said that there is no temptation that is taking you except that which is common to man. But God is faithful and will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. But with the temptation will make a way for escape for you that you may be able to bear it. So with every temptation, God has given an escape. All right. So the temptation, if it's there, is common. Why? Because you can only be tempted by what's in you. All right. So the thing is, is that when God is doing surgery on you, you got the key to unlock it. All right. And you got the key to lock the access to the enemy. All right. That's trying to tempt you in that area, too. So if you lock that thing up and you break that legal right, then you have the power to overcome that temptation. Temptation can't take you. The Bible, I think it was James says, when a man uh, is, 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 is falls into temptation, he's drawn away by his own lust, then he's enticed, all right? So get rid of the thing that's in us. That's the key to it, get rid of the thing. And we have the power and authority to do it. We have the power and authority to get rid of that thing. All right. So if there's something there that's bothering you, if you have an intrusive thoughts, suicidal thoughts, if you're depressed, if you're in a, a, a state of uh, don't know which way to go, confusion, uh, uh, turmoil, whatever it may be, you have the key. Remember that tonight. You have the key and you have the power to lock it out. All right. And so what it is, whatever, whatever, if it's suicide, I unlock life and I lock up suicide. All right. If it's if it's confusion. I lock out confusion, all right? And I open up soundness, sound mind, all right? No matter what it is, lock up the bad thing, bind it up and unlock, all right? The the thing that you need that you're in search of, all right? Because you have the power to do it. Now, when you bind it up, all right? Don't just leave it there, kick it out, all right? Kick it out of your house, all right? Because what's happened is that we talked about this a while back, um, is that you have squatters, all right? And what they do is that they sit back and wait for you to get in trouble and wait for you your house to go in foreclosure, all right? And while you're trying to get that thing out of foreclosure, all right, and you, you, you've had to move your furniture out of the house, they, then the squatters come to come and squat on your property, all right? 
but uh, un until that thing is 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 gone is until it is fully finished if it's not fully finished yet all right then there's still some hope and so what it is as long as your name is on the deed then you can kick that squad out mm. all right because even though he's in that squad he don't have access he don't have the authority to be there all right because the property belongs to you yes all right? and i and i even heard while i was sitting here we nowadays we have modern technology so we even have keys to unlock the temperature box in our house yes <laughs> and so he said you i have given you the key to turn up the heat mm. on the enemy come on now he said not only have i given you the keys to turn <laughs> up the heat on the enemy but i've given you the keys to turn up the temperature in your atmosphere or to turn it down so when things ain't going the way that you needed to go he said i've given you the keys to turn it up Mm. When things is too hot, when it seems like it's too much drama, it's too much confusion, it's too much frustration, it's too much anger, it's too much, he said, I'll give you the keys to mm. cut it down. So there he said, I've given you a spiritual gauge to be able to turn up and down the temperature in which you need it to be. Mm. Amen. Praise and in Jesus' name. Amen. That's good. Anybody That's good. else? Anybody? Come on. What you hearing? Let's get it. In Jesus' name. Hey, Latoya. I know April want to say something. She's like, but I said I weren't going to say nothing else. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just not getting in. Um, I had to make a stop at the airport. I'm so sorry. But I don't know what, what we're unlocking the keys on. I'm sorry. Amen. The keys of the kingdom. Jesus had given uh -huh. you the keys to the kingdom. You have a master key. And you have been given access. So stop praying for the door to open when he has given you the key to unlock the door. All right. Now, if it's a wrong door that's been opened in your life by the okay. enemy, then you okay. have that same key to lock that door. Okay. I've, right. I've been praying that lately. So you yeah. have the power and the authority to lock and to unlock, to loose and to and unloose, to bind, to unbind. Amen to that. Amen. Hey, guys. Javar. <laughs> hey, Javar. Hey, what's up, my brother? <laughs> okay, Sarita said, I can't have visitors, so I don't have a Bible, but God said, I will come. That's right. He's going to come in. Amen. He's there. Right He's now. there now, right Amen. with you. Paul said, That word have I hid in my heart. The word is hidden in your heart, it's been engrafted in there. So you have the, you have the Bible with you. Amen. Yes, yes, Amen. yes. And the Holy Spirit will bring all things back yes. to your remembrance. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So as long as you got God, you got the word. Amen. He's in your heart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm looking now. Okay. Sarita just sent something. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. The sword, oh, she said this. Oh, okay, I got it, I got it. Okay, so she's saying that the Bible was sent to her. Oh, okay. She didn't have one, but God will come. So she sent, so the Bible's there. Amen. A Bible, a Bible came to her in the room. There you go, King James. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, and look, Lord. so you, you, she said the word was sent to her. Jesus said, <laughs> I sent my word to heal you. <laughs> ah, he sent his word, sent his to, word heal to heal you, heal Sarita. You. He sent his word to heal you. Praise the Lord. The sword came. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, yes it did. The sword came to see about you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I Praise sent my word. He, did, let me tell you something. Did you know that healing will chase you down? My mm. God, healing. He said, I sent my word to heal you. Healing will mm. chase you down. Ah, thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, God. She said, I called the chaplain and it came down. I know that's right. Amen. I know that's right. In the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. In the name of, we're going to cover you in prayer before we get off tonight. The Bible says yes. where two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. One can put a flight of thousand, two can chase 10,000. And so um, it's about 19, 20 of us in the room. Actually, it's about 21 of us in here. And um, we're going to put the devil, his demons, the beast, the false prophet, his angels, and every imp, every witch, every warlock that's attached to uh, or that's standing around, that's in, that's near Sarita, 
and connected to her sickness to leave in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, in Jesus' name. I know it's off topic, but those pictures, like right here, these pictures, like they, she looked like she's going to throw a shoe. Yeah. And her smile, every time I looked over that, it looks as if she's smiling for real uh, in person, live. And, it, and it, it encourages. He's talking about Sienna. <laughs> Sienna's picture looked like she about to throw a shoe. <laughs> and Jakiria looked like she's smiling at him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any any questions or comments before we get off tonight, before we go into war for Sarita? We thank you guys for coming on. It's a short night tonight. She said, I threw about five shoe at, shoes at you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Dr. J looked like she's back there saying, my God. <laughs> what you got to release, Dr. J? You got something in your belly tonight? What y'all got? I don't want to get off. I know somebody got something to say. Sienna? Yes, amen. I, uh, this was really, really, really good. Like, I just, I, it was just so good. And like locking, doing like getting the actual key and like locking and unlocking stuff, like doubt and fear and, and confusion, frustration. It was, yeah, it was amazing. And I just, I literally felt, I felt it, you know, like, I felt the chills and I was just, I loved it. I loved every minute. Where are you from? Originally from Tennessee, but I live in Arkansas. Now. Arkansas. Okay. 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 What part of Arkansas? Uh, Rogers, Northwest Arkansas. So okay. by Bentonville, Fayetteville. Okay. I know exactly that where you're at. Is that in Arkansas? No, she's in Arizona. Arizona. Okay. Yeah, I got some friends out there in uh, Arkansas. Dominique, daughter, you good tonight? I am. Thank you. I am. Good, good. Rochelle, the spiritual sniper, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. That that really blessed me tonight. So I wasn't playing. I was like, oh, God, you got me good tonight. <laughs> I wasn't playing up in here. Between you and April, y'all be. <laughs> Ooh, I needed that. I know we all needed that. That was on fire. That was like. And even when April was added in, it was just all like going good. So yes, thank you all so much. Yes. Kiara, you at work? I'm, we praying for this new position so she can be loosed in Jesus' name. It's hers already. And she was the one that said she was typing to put her name in the prayer group on, on the actual, with the actual client. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> she So she was in in prayer and she was typing in on her job telling the lady saw him oh talking about add me to your prayer list and, the, and the, her client said or her customer said um you can add, you me, can add me to your prayer, prayer list but can we deal with this bill so, so you can't take that off this bill but you <laughs> so you want me to add you to the prayer list but you can't do that with this bill oh uh, it was so funny she was typing to the customer <laughs> tiffany tiffany <laughs> i don't I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Sienna was throwing shoes and pillow and everything else. I was throwing my hands up in the air. I was like, I surrender God. I mean, I don't even know what to say. Like you can have, listen, you can have, do whatever you feel you got to do. Just do it. I don't even care no more. I'm not, <laughs> there's no restraint no more. None of that. You could just have it. Like, I, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. Uh, I don't even know what to say. He wow. gathered me today. You said he, he did what? Me. He gathered me. He gathered <laughs> he you. Gathered. He got me all the way together. He got mm -hmm. you together. And it's crazy because he took me to, I believe it was Genesis that he took me to last week. So I'm like, hold on. You took, you, <laughs> he literally took me to Genesis 7. And now we, what? I was like, why? I was like, why are you taking me here? And I didn't understand it. And I was like, I, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. And now, okay, it makes sense now. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's what the Lord does. He comes to confirm his, his word. So out of two or three, 
um, people. Sienna said she got a whole she lot, got a whole to, lot say to say, but not having, having nothing to say. To say. <laughs> That's how we all be. Um, Deshaun, you still driving? Deacon Deshaun. No, I'm good. I'm at the house now, but uh, yeah, man, everything was good. Uh, it uh, made me realize my authority, you know, gave me a little more confidence. There you okay. go. You got that key. And, see, and the thing is, too, guys, y'all re- y'all use this stuff when you're praying. You say, Lord, you gave me the keys of the kingdom to be able to unlock this or to bind this or to loose this. Rem- remind him of his word. Amen. Remind him of his word. Remind him of his promises because he is faithful. Yes. He's faithful and just, okay? He's a promise keeper. Y'all know the okay. song. He's a promise keeper. And so he's not going to tell us or make a promise. He's a covenant kind of guy. So he's right. not going to make a promise with us and go back on that promise. The only one that reneges on that promise is us. And so we have to hold him to his promises. Amen. And if, if it's anything pertaining to the kingdom, God bless you, Brent. If it's anything pertaining to the kingdom, you have access to it. You have access to it. He gave him the keys to the <laughs> entire kingdom. All right. That's just like... Uh, Who's that get that big mansion down there in Atlanta? Rick Ross. If he just called you up and gave you the key to his house, he's like, look, I'm going out of town and you can have this house. You got the key. You got access. Whatever you want. Go ahead. Every room you got access to. Yeah, Jakiria, hold on one second. And Kier said, y'all, I'm at work. But listen, I put a customer on hold to go get my keys. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Jakiria said she had something she wanted to say. Go ahead. Hello, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, I feel like this was a good teaching on tonight. Um, uh, I feel like I need to hear that. Um, because like we always like talking about um like locking locking the door to negative and unlocking the door for um uh, positive. You know, I feel like that was for me. I feel like I need to hear that, you know, because sometimes like it's hard for me to like um Lock, lock the door to negativity, especially like when I'm surrounded by like nothing but bad memories and bad thoughts and stuff like that, you know. Right. It, it'd be hard for me to like um lock the door like when when I when like I'm just surrounded by negativity, you know. Right. Think about it like this. You you get off work, you pull up to your house. It's dark and you look behind you as you're going in the house and there's a robber, a thief that's trying to come and attack you. And you step across that threshold and you turn around and you turn that deadbolt, all right? That's how you got to see that devil. That devil's a thief. The Bible says he come but to steal, kill, and destroy. So those are the three things that you come. If you come, one of those things are happening. And so you got to lock him out, just like you would lock a, a, a natural thief out, a natural robber out, turn that deadbolt, lock it up on him. And you have the authority to do that. And it has to, it has to, baby. Because why? Because Jesus said, he said, whatsoever you bind on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. All right. So in other words, Jesus said, because you good with me, you good with the father also. All right. 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 I feel like I got to start declaring and, and declaring and decreeing That's of right. my own life, you know. That's right. Yeah. Speak those things too in this existence. Exactly. All right. And, and start learning your authority and start learning how to exercise that authority. Right. And and I know it seems sometimes like it's easier said than done, but it right. really is easy mm-hmm. once you learn the concept. And the concept is this. Um, let, OK, let's pray over Sarita real quick. Her phone's about to die. Father, we touch and agree now yes, in the name of Jesus. Father, that you will heal, deliver and set free. Father, I pray, God, that you will touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Father, we come in agreement tonight, God, right now as a body, name, as her sisters, yes, as her God. brothers. We come with spiritual authority in the name of Jesus. Yes, and I come now and I bind up every demon, every demonic spirit now that's yes. attacking her body, that's attacking her respiratory system, yes. that's attacking her mind, that's attacking everything yes. that should that uh, everything concerning her and her family and in her household. And I've loose now the yes. spirit of uh, 
of um, I loose the spirit of peace now yes, in the name Lord. of Jesus. I yes. loose the spirit of joy, sound mind now in yes. Jesus' mighty name. Heal Father, we pray, God, we loose healing now. Your healing vit vi uh, virtue. Yes. You sent your word, God, that we would be healed. And so, Father, I thank you for healing her now. Yes. In Jesus' name, I thank you for expeditiously, miracle, God, moving on her life, God. I pray, Father, you will loose now your miracle working power yes, in God. that room in the name of in Jesus. Name of Father, Jesus. we give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Father, we loose now great health amongst yes. her now in the name of jesus we loose a sound mind father we pray that every bit of her body will regulate and will come into its proper alignment we speak yes. now to every organ we speak now to her lungs her liver yes. in the name of jesus it shall line up with the way that her body was originally created to be in jesus, in name, jesus name and we flush out now we command every bit of mucus to yes. dry up and die yes. in, the in the name of jesus we command every infirmity to dry up and die in now jesus in her name. body in the name of Jesus, we send heavenly hosts of angels. We ask, Father, that you will release your host of angels to go and encamp around her bedside and minister to her body, minister to her as she lays there in the middle of the night, during the day, 24-7, yes. in the name of Jesus. Anoint her afresh now. Send, send your oil, Father, and anoint her in the name of Jesus from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Let your Holy Spirit, God, rest, rule, and abide in her, through her, and with her. In the name of in Jesus, the name of anoint Jesus. the hands of the doctors and the nurses. And Father, I pray, God, that you will keep her, keep her mind stayed on you in perfect peace. And we give you all glory. We give you our honor and our praise. In Jesus' name, in let Jesus the redeemed name. of the Lord say, amen. 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 Hopefully she got that. If not, I'll send her a video in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. She said, I got to call the nurse. nurse. I got to call a nurse. I'm at 1%. So that means she needs a charger. She needs a nurse to plug in her phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, okay, so Jakiria was talking. Um, Pam, Miss Pam, you good? Javar's in town. Javar. <laughs> I, well, she said airport. I knew that's what she was talking about. <laughs> we was trying. Hey, hey how y'all doing? Don't y'all look so crude? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, Latoya man done flew all the way across the country to see her. Look, don't that look? She happy now. Look, look. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's what that's what God will do. Oh yeah, God will send you somebody from all the way across the nation. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, got to to make sure that we just stay focused on God, and this will come later. That's oh, yeah. right. That's right. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay, so Rita, who we have? Okay, Miss Pam. Oh, you good, Miss Pam? I'm great. I'm great. Y'all just keep it coming. I got my bag ready. My kids. I know I'm that's right. Ready. I know. And you know what? And we're gonna pray, and we're praying for your husband too, Miss Pam. God's gonna send you a husband. Unlock that door. It, make it's room. unlocked. It's hey, unlocked. Make room in the bed for him now. Don't get set. Yeah. I know he's probably set in your ways, but make room in the bed, make room at the <laughs> table. Go ahead and lay the oh, yeah. spread the table. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Put his plate out. Make him a plate in faith. I used to do that. I'm very submissive. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yes to your will and your way. <laughs> All right, now. I know that's right. Lord. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm glad you're doing okay. Juanita? Hello, everybody. Good tonight. I'm doing good tonight. Hope everybody else is doing well. Um, the uh, tonight was really, really a bless to me. Um, definitely about opening, having the keys, opening the door. Uh, just like I told you earlier, I'm going Saturday to start trying on my wedding dress in faith for my husband. And, um, I'm just believing God, not only that, even for my children, uh, my son, um, my oldest son still battling with the enemy. And, um, I noticed